So this piece of cardio equipment is probably the most recognisable in, in almost every gym around the world. The treadmill, it's great for low impact walking on an incline to a jog to a sprint. So I'm just going to show you now how to set this up. When you first got the treadmill, you'll press start or quick start. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to increase the speed and we're just going to do it to a slow, steady walk. So maybe we're going to put that to around about 2.5 miles an hour. From there, we can either increase or decrease the incline. So if we want to walk uphill, we'll simply press the incline up button and we're going to take that up to level three. Studies show that walking on an incline can burn up to twice as many calories as you do when you're walking on a flat. And a treadmill is a great way for you to come in, warm up, cool down, or even do a full cardio-based workout. That's a demonstration of a walk. If we were going to go into a slight jog, We'll just put the treadmill up to about 5.3 miles an hour. But you'll just force you into a slight run. Once you've done that, it's really simple. You can either slow it down and go down to a slow walk again. Or if at that point you want to stop the treadmill, just simply press the stop button or in an emergency, pull the cord off, which will completely stop the treadmill right there. Okay guys, this is a variation of a seated lat pull down. I'm going to be doing it the opposite way around and I'm going to lean back and I'll show you why now. But this is going to get a, a different angle of the back to what a conventional lat pull down will do. You'll feel this in the upper outer portion of the lats. So I'm going to take the bar with a slightly wide grip. I'm going to sit slightly forward off the pad and I'm going to lean back. What you'll notice is this, this exercise actually performs more like a row than what it does with a, a lat pull down. But I'm lean back, but I'm not gonna let my back touch the pad behind. At this point now, I'm gonna try and keep that cable straight as I drive my elbows down. I'm gonna bring that to about two or three inches to make sure that I keep contraction on the back. I'm gonna take it up and fully stretch them lats up. And I'm gonna pull it back down again and hold that squeeze just a couple of inches away from the collarbone. Can you see I'm stretching on every single rep? And I'm holding that contraction, squeezing it at the bottom. If you look at the position of the rope as I'm pulling it down, it's almost in a completely straight line. That shows me that I'm in the perfect position to perform this exercise. And at this point, I'm stretching them lats up. And at this point, I'm pulling them elbows down and keeping it in line. Okay, guys. So this is how to perform a high rope row to the head. We're using a, a rope attachment and it's set to a height that was just about in line with my chin. Now, we're going to take the, the grip overhand like so. We're going to take the stretch off. I'm going to place one foot forward, fully stretch, and that is the position that I'm going to start in when I'm leaning forward. As I'm pulling it back, I'm pulling it up to my eyebrows, and just note my elbow position on this as well. I'm pulling it back, and I'm pulling my elbows forward, almost as if I'm doing a front bicep pose. And every time I'm stretching forward, and I'm pulling back. As I'm pulling my hands back, I'm driving my elbows forward to really engage the muscles on my back. One more. And that's a great way to do it. We're using a DAP machine. You can use a high cable, but just try and get the height set right so it's about in line within the side of your chin using the rope handle. Okay, guys. So this is a variation of the, the seated row, but we're gonna use the rope handle rather than the V-bar handle. So what we're gonna do with this one is instead of how we normally put our feet on there, we're gonna place our feet on the floor and dig our heels in. We're then gonna take our glutes as far back 
as we can to stay on this bench. Now, once we're there like that, we're gonna keep our hands with our overhand grip on the rope. We're gonna stretch all the way to there. Then as we pull back, we're gonna twist our hands and lift our chest to the sky. Straighten our arms, lean forward, stretch them lats. Ooh. So note what I'm doing there on my chest. As I'm pulling back, my chest is driving towards the sky every single time. And at this point, I'm fully stretching my lats and I'm keeping my feet dug into the ground. So my feet and my position doesn't move at all. So as I'm getting to the midway point, which is about here, I'm imagining now that my chest is pushing up and towards the rope and I'm just pulling my hands towards my chest. And fully stretch. Now, if I was to do this by putting my feet on there, as you can see, my feet wouldn't reach. So for that reason, if I was sat there, I wouldn't get the stretch that I wanted to on the lats. Hence why I'm sat further back on the seat and my feet are dug into the ground. Now, if your seat is only short, you could place a box behind your seat, which would allow you to sit on behind it, which would allow you to get the stretch. Okay, so this one, it's how to perform a high row if you don't have a, a high row machine, but you can use a high cable pulley with a rope handle. We need a bench and note the position I've put on a very slight incline, which I'm gonna put my bum down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the full stretch and I'm gonna set myself so my lats are fully stretched, but I'm just slightly engaging the plates, as you can see there. At that point there, I'm gonna pull my hands back to my belly button and go wide but at the same time I'm going to push my chest to the sky <sighs> stretching forward push my chest to the sky and as I'm pulling back where my belly button is I'm spreading the rope apart and I'm imagining it's my elbows I'm actually driving it with, not my hands, which is really engaging my back. Ooh. Ooh. And that's a great variation and it's a great way to use a high cable machine if you don't have a high roll machine. Okay guys, so this is how to perform a barbell row using the trap bar. Now these bars are heavy enough on their own, but I'm gonna show you how to do this with perfect form. Now, if you've watched the rest of the videos, we're almost gonna go into an RDL position, which is gonna put us in the right position to perform this. So remember, when we're taking this bar, don't bend over and pick that up. Make sure you pick it up with the right manual handling technique. So bend from the knees, hands up, and stand fully. Now, we're going to have our feet about shoulder width apart. We're going to shoot our glutes back and bring our shoulders to the sky and our chest up, which is going to be almost an RDL position. Now, this is the position that we're going to go in. From this point, I'm going to row it up over. Now, this is hard to perform if you're using a barbell, but this allows you to really get a good weight with perfect form. And what I'm going to do is at the top, I'm going to hold that position and back down again. Ugh. And as I said, if anyone's picked one of these bars up, we'll know that without any weight on this bar is heavy. But that's how to perform a barbell row using a trap bar. So this isn't seen in every gym around the world, but it's an absolutely fantastic piece of cardio equipment. It's called the Stairmaster and it can be absolutely brutal, but so rewarding. You see a lot of professional athletes, particularly bodybuilders, bikini girls who absolutely love this for the, for the simple fact that it puts a good emphasis on your glutes while you're doing it. So when you do get on this Stairmaster, just press the green button in front of you. What that'll do, it'll release the brake off the revolving staircase. Now the staircase will move dependent on the user's weight. And all you're gonna do is by turning the level up is release the brake a little bit more, which will allow the revolving staircase 
to revolve that little bit faster. Ashley uses this daily, so she's a seasoned pro on this machine and she loves it. There's various ways you can use it. You can use it a single step at a time, or she could go on at two steps at a time. So now her feet will miss one tread and take two steps up. You could make it even more advanced by doing a glute kickback as you're stepping up the steps. As I said, this is an absolutely amazing piece of kit. And if your gym's got one, you're a really lucky person. So make the most of this. Don't be afraid of it. Start off if you can do one minute and then work your way up to two minutes. And what sometimes we do is we'll do a period of time on this and we'll then put somebody off it, back onto the treadmill and then come back on again. So that way they can work the way up to a level. Uh, Ashley's currently doing around about one hour solid on this. Now, myself, I'll probably do about three or four minutes. It's a hard piece of equipment, but so rewarding and so, so, so beneficial to anybody. So I would definitely recommend that you definitely give this a go, give it a try, don't be afraid of it. And just to finish this one off, Ashley's gonna turn the speed up and she's gonna show you now how she can get into a run. And just note this fact as well, on this particular Stairmaster, in the top left-hand corner, there's a picture of a fan. If she presses the picture of the fan, that'll blow cold air at her face. So she's gonna get into a run. As you do get more experience on this, you'll be able to leave go of the handles but I would recommend you always stay within a balance. As you can see now, Ashley's actually into a run where her arms are moving as well. As her arms are moving, she's burning more calories because more parts of her body are moving. So this piece of cardio equipment is probably the most recognizable in, in almost every gym around the world, the treadmill. It's great for low impact walking on an incline to a jog to a sprint. So I'm just gonna show you now how to set this up. When you first got the treadmill, you'll press start or quick start. Then we have various options on here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the speed and we're just gonna do it to a slow, steady walk. So maybe we're gonna put that to around about 2.5 miles an hour. From there, we can either increase or decrease the incline. So if we want to walk uphill, we'll simply press the incline up button and we're going to take that up to level three. Studies show that walking on an incline can burn up to twice as many calories as you do when you're walking on a flat. And a treadmill is a great way for you to come in, warm up, cool down, or even do a full cardio-based workout. That's a demonstration of a walk. If we were going to go into a slight jog, We'll just put the treadmill up to about 5.3 miles an hour. But you'll just force you into a slight run. Once you've done that, it's really simple. You can either slow it down and go down to a slow walk again, or if at that point you want to stop the treadmill, just simply press the stop button or in an emergency, pull the cord off, which will completely stop the treadmill right there. Okay guys, next exercise is gonna be a drag curl. So we've taken a barbell, and if you know where we're putting our hands, just slightly wider and shoulder width apart. Now with a drag curl, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your chest up to the sky. We stood almost straight with a slight bend in our knees. Now what we're gonna do, I'll turn to the side and show you. I'm gonna bring this up by pushing my elbows back and note my forearm becomes about parallel with the ground below it. So as I come up, I'm imagining I'm bending the bar and I'm driving it with the palm side of my pinky finger as if I'm trying to twist it. So can you see how my elbows come back as I'm dragging it up my body every single time? So again, just make sure as we're bringing this up, we're driving our elbows back 
so it's allowing us to drag the bar up our body. This is how to perform an alternating dumbbell curl. What we've done is we've took a normal bench, put on a 45 degree incline, and she's just resting a glute against it. She's gonna do one arm at a time, and as she's gonna bring it up to contraction, she's gonna twist her pinky finger in, which is gonna really overemphasize the squeeze on her bicep. So note her wrist position on this. They still slightly drop back, and she's really twisting that pinky side in, which is getting maximum contraction on that bicep. So can you see the position of the dumbbell changing as she takes it to the top and the bottom portion of the exercise? So she's twisting it now to be in line with the legs, and then she's twisting that pinky round. If you notice at the bottom, she's also tensing her tricep as she's alternating the opposite arm. When we're doing this, it's important that we can get a contraction of the bicep and not just throw weights around. That's why I've chosen a weight, which actually will be able to get around about 10 to 12 reps on each arm, but feel a contraction on every single rep. Hey guys, we're moving on to a, a rope tricep pushdown. This is my personal favorite rope. It's longer than the conventional rope, what you find. Now, if you don't have one of these, you can still create a very similar one by using two of these ropes and put them together at the clip there, which creates the same length. But for this exercise, I'm gonna do it on this particular rope here. The good thing about this is you can put your hands in there in the lock position. Now, again, as with all tricep exercises that we've done so far, we're leaning forward ever so slightly, and the emphasis is gonna be on making sure that that rope comes down in a straight manner. Now, as you get into this position, we're tucking our elbows in, and we're taking the tension on to our triceps. As we're gonna do this, we're gonna push the triceps down, but as we go down, we're twisting them out all the way. Now, note where that rope is. It's going up my face, my arms and my forearms are going about three inches above parallel to keep maximum stretch on them triceps and I'm pushing it down and I'm pulling them ropes apart and twisting my wrists out over. So just watch the rope position on this. It's going straight up and down. Notice how slow and steady I'm taking this. I'm not just pumping these reps out, I'm feeling every part of the stretch and of the contraction. And it's really important to get the mind to muscle connection on this to hit the tricep heads. Okay, moving on guys to the overhead EZ bar cable extension. Again, make sure that the position of this rope is about in line with your chest. Now, we're gonna grip this bar on the close grip side of the EZ bar. And once we take that, we're gonna let it drop down far enough to engage our tricep, but not too far to stretch our shoulders. Keeping our shoulders forward as we are, and keeping our elbows tucked in, we're then gonna fully extend and drive through. Now, note my hand position as I return this. My wrists are forward, which is putting great emphasis onto my tricep. Can you see how my hands are forward to keep that stretch? Keep the elbows tucked in and squeeze every rep. Feel it stretch, allow your body and your mind to connect so you can put greater stress and emphasis on the triceps. Triceps are a fantastic muscle which often get overlooked in the arm. People generally focus on the bicep but the tricep is three separate heads and they're far greater in size than what the biceps are. So don't underestimate this. Make sure you get the blood there and make sure that you give them the own workout. I like to, to do biceps and triceps together. Generally, I'll either start with my triceps or I'll throw two triceps with one biceps and then two triceps, one biceps. Okay, guys. This next exercise for triceps is probably not something that you're familiar with or have seen.
being used in the gym. And it's a very old school movement, back in the 70s and 80s. And it's a form of a tricep kickback, but we're gonna use the low cable pulley and the knees head bar to get it right. So first of all, we're gonna set this. So it's just about the middle of our shins to get this completely right. Then we're gonna take the EZ bar and place it behind our kneecaps and work, walk backwards. Now, this is a position that I'm in. I've got a slight bend in my knees and my shoulders uh, above my glutes. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm now gonna take this and contract it all the way back before I bring it forward and take a full extension. And note my wrist position on this as well. The cocked forward so I can squeeze and get that contraction. The good thing about this exercise is it lets you get that mind to muscle connection. <clears throat> and it's a different way than using a dumbbell for a tricep kickback, which is the general way people do them. <clears throat> but again, this exercise is probably not one that you're gonna be able to go overly heavy with. And form on this exercise is absolutely paramount. Give this one a go. Okay guys, most gyms around the world have this or one of these machines. It's an arm curl machine, otherwise known as a preacher curl. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do on this is slightly alter the way that we sit. So, conventionally, this machine would have you sat on here, like that, leant over, and you would curl that to there, which is great, but I think there's a slightly better way that you can get a contraction and a stretch on your biceps. And what I like to do on this machine is I like to lay into it. So I don't use the seat, I lay into it. And what I'll do is I'll bring this up and I'll put my head down. I'll drop my wrists back and see the angle of these. This automatically forces me to put the pressure through the palm side, not the pinky side of my palm. So head goes down, I pull it up, and you see how every time I emphasize that I'm lifting my elbows off the pad to hold that contraction. And this just really helps get a stretch and a contraction on them biceps. So now just watch what my head does. So as it goes up, it stays down. I put it back up. And it's really important in this that you control the negative as well. So what I mean by that, one more time to show you, is on the negative, count in your head four seconds as you're going down to take the full stretch. And as you come up, it's two seconds, then hold the squeeze for a second and back down on four again. This is all about trying to get the blood to the bicep. So this isn't seen in every gym around the world, but it's an absolutely fantastic piece of cardio equipment. It's called the Stairmaster, and it can be absolutely brutal, but so rewarding. You see a lot of professional athletes, particularly bodybuilders, bikini girls, who absolutely love this for the, for the simple fact that it puts a good emphasis on your glutes while you're doing it. So when you do get on this Stairmaster, just press the green button in front of you. What that'll do, it'll release the brake off the revolving staircase. Now, the staircase will move dependent on the user's weight, and all you're going to do is by turning the level up is release the brake a little bit more which will allow the revolving staircase to revolve that little bit faster. Ashley uses this daily so she's a seasoned pro on this machine and she loves it. There's various ways you can use it. You can use it a single step at a time or she could go on at two steps at a time so now her feet will miss one tread and take two steps up. You could make it even more advanced by doing a glute kickback as you're stepping up the steps. As I said, this is an absolutely amazing piece of kit and if your gym's got one, you're a really lucky person, so make the most of this. Don't be afraid of it. Start off if you can do one minute and then work your way up to two minutes and what sometimes we do is we'll do a period of time on this 
and we'll then put somebody off it back onto the treadmill and then come back on again so that way they can work the way up to a level uh, Ashley's currently doing around about one hour solid on this now myself I'll probably do about three or four minutes it's a hard piece of equipment but so rewarding and so 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 beneficial to anybody so I would definitely recommend that you definitely give this a go give it a try don't be afraid of it and just to finish this one off Ashley's going to turn the speed up and she's going to show you now how she can get into a run and just note this fact as well on this particular Stairmaster in the top left hand corner there's a picture of a fan if she presses the picture of the fan that'll blow cold air at her face so she's going to get into a run as you do get more experience on this you'll be able to leave go of the handles but I would recommend you always stay within a balance as you can see now Ashley's actually into a run where her arms are moving as well as her arms are moving she's burning more calories because more parts of her body are moving so this piece of cardio equipment is probably the most recognizable in, in almost every gym around the world the treadmill it's great for low impact walking on an incline to a jog to a sprint so I'm just going to show you now how to set this up when you first got the treadmill you'll press start or quick start then we have various options on here the first thing we're going to do is we're going to increase the speed and we're just going to do it to a slow steady walk so maybe we're going to put that to around about 2.5 miles an hour from there we can either increase or decrease the incline so if we want to walk uphill we'll simply press the incline up button and we're going to take that up to level three Studies show that walking on an incline can burn up to twice as many calories as you do when you're walking on a flat. And a treadmill is a great way for you to come in, warm up, cool down, or even do a full cardio-based workout. That's a demonstration of a walk. If we were going to go into a, a slight jog, we'll just put the treadmill up to about 5.3 miles an hour. But you'll just force you into a slight run. Once you've done that, it's really simple. You can either slow it down and go down to a slow walk again, or if at that point you want to stop the treadmill, just simply press the stop button, or in an emergency, pull the cord off, which will completely stop the treadmill right there. Right guys, we're going to move on. Bent over, incline, rear, lateral raise. We've set the bench around about 45 degrees. Now, the bench is just going to be used to place our chest across the top of it. So put a slight bend in my legs rest my chest on the top of the bench and then roll my shoulders slightly over the top all I'm going to do now is keep the dumbbells with the palms facing the way they are and then lift and I'm imagining there's a little bit of string on my elbows and it's my elbows that are lifting to the sky not my hands and that way I can keep the maximum emphasis on the rear delts now the rear delts, they often get forgotten about when you're, when you're prescribing a shoulder workout or when you're training the shoulders and the suit that's overlooked. There's a massive importance to train these because it gives you a full round shoulder. Right guys, upright rows. Now a lot of people make a mistake with this and they put the hands close together and pull the bar really high up which puts emphasis on the traps rather than the delts so the way that I like to do this is I like to take my hands on a wide grip I like to lean forward ever so slightly and then what I like to do is bring the bar away from my body by about two or three inches and pull that up as far as I can and return it back down again and can you see because my hands are wide it restricts how far I can pull it up which keeps maximum contraction onto my delts as opposed to enforcing it to go on to my traps. Now, another thing I want to show you here is I'm letting the bar hang in my fingers there. So I'm going to show you as I grab, grab the bar now. So as I grab it wide, I'm letting the bar hang inside there. And as I'm pulling that up, I'm keeping the pull coming through my fingers. 
which is creating emphasis onto my delts. Okay guys, next up is a side lateral raise. It's a standing side lateral raise, but we're gonna brace ourselves against this bench. Now the reason for that is just to be really strict with our form. A lot of people when they're doing a, a standing side lateral raise, they'll swing themselves like that. By bracing ourselves against this bench, we can't swing, so it's a really strict exercise. Now, one thing I want you to do here is, as you're bringing them up, I want you to imagine you're pouring a kettle. By pouring that kettle, you can't take your hands too high, which keeps the maximum emphasis on the delts. And this is a side lateral raise, remember, it's not a front raise. Hence why the range of motion and the form is the way it is. So that's how to do a standing side lateral raise with strict form. Okay guys, so next exercise is to target the front delts. And I'm gonna use the EZ bar. Now, I like to use the standing preacher curl as a backrest. You can use a bench, it's completely up to you. But taking the EZ bar in a close grip position, we brace our back, our lower back against the preacher curl machine. Then what we do is we take it from about our chin between our chin and our mouth, and we push that up. Now what we don't do, is we don't come back like that. What we do is we come down and up and away to keep that emphasis on targeting the front delts. Now, it's quite a short range of motion in what you're doing, which keeps maximum stress on the front delts. And you're imagining you're pushing. Now notice how far my arms come down. My tricep is pretty much parallel with the ground. Oh. It's really important that you get your hand position right. Don't take that too far down. So you roll your shoulders, keep it to about that position. So almost so that part there is about parallel with the ground and drive that up away from you. Don't go behind your head, go in front of your head. A good point to get to that actually, while I'm there, is to keep your eyes on the bar, which if it comes out of sight, you can't see it. So keep looking at the bar, which will keep you in the correct position. Okay, so next up is the standing shoulder press, also known as a military press. We're using a straight barbell. The first thing to note here is the position of a feet. People do this in two separate ways, and it's generally whichever way is comfortable for you. I like to do mine with my feet in line, shoulder width apart. Ash actually prefers to do hers, where she stands with her right leg forward and her left leg back. It just allows her to drive them last couple of reps. So for this video, she'll put her foot position in that way. Again, you can put it either way. So we're gonna take this bar up. Now, as she starts to press this, She's coming down, so the bar is just below her nose, and she's taking it up to squeeze. Now, if we go to the side, we'll note her elbow position on this as well, because what a lot of people do is, as they bring this down, they bring the elbows like that, which isn't right. You need to bring them elbows forward and sit in the back part of your arms. So as we press that up, we come down and up, and if you look at the, the line of motion, the bar is pretty much going straight up and straight down. And that's because she's got her elbows in the perfect position. Now, this is an underrated exercise and it's great for overall shoulder development. You can either do this in a Smith machine or with a straight bar, it's entirely up to you. There's machines out there which will replicate the same exercise. But personally, I love to do this the old school way with a barbell standing in a position and driving that weight up. Okay guys, next up is a dumbbell shoulder shrug. So many people get this exercise wrong and I'm gonna show you the way that I like to do it, which really does help target them traps. So when we take the dumbbells, what a lot of people do is they take the dumbbells at the side and they come up and they roll the shoulders. 
Now that is completely wrong and can massively lead to an injury. So what I like to do is I like to start with my feet about shoulder width apart. Place the dumbbells just inside my quad. Now I've got a slight bend in my elbows and I'm imagining that someone's pulling my elbows up as I'm twisting the dumbbells around the back of my glutes. I'm holding the stretch at the top just for a split second. Now can you see how I'm rotating them dumbbells and I'm imagining that my elbows are being pulled rather than my hands. You imagine that your shoulders are tucking in against your ears. So this isn't seen in every gym around the world, but it's an absolutely fantastic piece of cardio equipment. It's called the Stairmaster, and it can be absolutely brutal, but so rewarding. You see a lot of professional athletes, particularly bodybuilders, bikini girls, who absolutely love this for the, for the simple fact that it puts a good emphasis on your glutes while you're doing it. So when you do get on this Stairmaster, just press the green button in front of you, what that'll do, it'll release the brake off the revolving staircase. Now, the staircase will move depending on the user's weight. And all you're going to do is by turning the level up, is release the brake a little bit more, which will allow the revolving staircase to revolve that little bit faster. Ashley uses this daily, so she's a seasoned pro on this machine, and she loves it. There's various ways you can use it. You can use it a single step at a time, or she could go on a two steps at a time. So now her feet will miss one tread and take two steps up. You could make it even more advanced by doing a glute kickback as you're stepping up the steps. As I said, this is an absolutely amazing piece of kit. And if your gym's got one, you're a really lucky person, so make the most of this. Don't be afraid of it. Start off if you can do one minute and then work your way up to two minutes. And what sometimes we do is we'll do a period of time on this and we'll then put somebody off it, back onto the treadmill and then come back on again. So that way they can work the way up to a level. Uh, Ashley's currently doing around about one hour solid on this. Now, myself, I'll probably do about three or four minutes. It's a hard piece of equipment, but so rewarding and so 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 beneficial to anybody so i would definitely recommend that you definitely give this a go give it a try don't be afraid of it and just to finish this one off ashley's going to turn the speed up and she's going to show you now how she can get into a run and just note this fact as well on this particular stairmaster in the top left hand corner there's a picture of a fan if she presses the picture of the fan that'll blow cold air at her face so she's going to get into a run as you do get more experience on this You'll be able to leave go of the handles, but I would recommend you always stay within a balance. As you can see now, Ashley's actually into a run where her arms are moving as well. As her arms are moving, she's burning more calories because more parts of her body are moving. So this piece of cardio equipment is probably the most recognisable in, in almost every gym around the world. The treadmill, it's great for low impact walking on an incline to a jog to a sprint. So I'm just going to show you now how to set this up. When you first got the treadmill, you'll press start or quick start. Then we have various options on here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to increase the speed and we're just going to do it to a slow, steady walk. So maybe we're going to put that to around about 2.5 miles an hour. From there, we can either increase or decrease the incline. So if we want to walk uphill, we'll simply press the incline up button and we're going to take that up to level three. Studies show that walking on an incline can burn up to twice as many calories as you do when you're walking on a flat. And a treadmill is a great way for you to come in, warm up, cool down, or even do a full cardio-based workout. That's a demonstration of a walk. If we were going to go into a slight jog, We'll just put the treadmill up to about 5.3 miles an hour. But you'll just force you into a slight run. 
Once you've done that, it's really simple. You can either slow it down and go down to a slow walk again, or if at that point you want to stop the treadmill, just simply press the stop button, or in an emergency, pull the cord off, which will completely stop the treadmill right there. So this exercise is an incline Smith machine press. There's a couple of key changes that I'm going to make to that what I did when I had the bench flat. So again, lay back on the bench, have the bar just as it comes down to the about an inch above the nipple to where the chest goes. Again, get your hand position right. So from your shoulders, go directly up where my pinky is. That's where my thumbs are going to go. And I'll grab all the bar. A lot of bars have ridges on, as you can see, a little smooth section on the bar. This is generally where you put your middle finger. So if your bar doesn't have that, take your shoulders up, place your pinky where that is, then grip the bar. Okay, so again, our elbow position. Our elbows are becoming slightly forward. They're not going wide. They're not going like a tricep. They're going just somewhere in between. And this is a massive thing. You must get your elbow position right on this. So we're going to lock the bar off. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is I'm coming down. Unlike on a flat, I'm not taking the bar down to my chest. I'm going to come about two or three inches above my chest. The reason for this is if I take that down now, you can see how I'm rolling my shoulders forward. And that's just going to put massive stress on my shoulders and lose the contraction on my chest. So we're going to take it down to about two or three inches and then up four fifths of the way up and squeeze our chest. And again, we're really emphasizing that part. We're pushing, we're driving it up with that part. And I'm imagining I'm squeezing the bar and trying to bend the bar to get maximum contraction on the chest. So again, down, elbows are right, just about two inches above my chest, up to the sky and really squeeze that chest together. Imagine that I'm getting it up. I'm pushing through that part of my palm, my hands, I'm trying to slide my hands together. So down. And I'm creating maximum contraction on my chest that way. And again, if you are new to this machine, please do use the stops, which will prevent the bar from coming down and stop you in an emergency. Okay, so this exercise is a decline dumbbell press. And this bench is flat, so I want to create the decline. So to do this, just going to take a 10 kilo plate, lift the edge of the bench up and place the plate underneath it. And it's putting on a very slight decline, which is enough. That's enough for the exercise that we're going to do. So as we're going down now, you can see I'm just on a decline. The one thing I'm always going to do is remember my elbow positions and my hand positions. So again, we're going to take them down to get the stretch on the pecs and then up and close that triangle again at the top every time so just note my elbow position have a very slightly forward and not engaging my my front delt and my hand position as well and i'm squeezing every single rep <sighs> decline is is not used that much in today's world and a lot of people think that if you do a flat bench you don't really need to to do decline but I don't know whether I do or agree or disagree with that, but I still like to do a very slight decline in my chest workout and it helps me get a, a great pump and overall shape and symmetry onto my chest. Okay, now we're, we're on to my ultimate favorite machine in the gym. And it's a lion bench press machine. This is a Panatta machine and it's really old, but the motion, the, the movement is probably the favorite movement that I've got on any machine. Now, there's a lot of machines like this, Hammer Strength do a version, Cybex do a version. I'm gonna be a little bit um, biased here and tell you that the Panatta machine that we've got is by far the best movement, although people with other machines will disagree. But this is definitely a machine that you should definitely, definitely include in your chest workout. So. On this one, you've got a little red button here, which allows you to determine how far this drops down. This is set perfectly for my height. So it's so remember on the flat, we go down and we let the bar touch our chest. This is what this is gonna do now. So 
we make sure that our feet are planted. And remember when we're doing an exercise, we're almost thinking that it's like a house, you start at the foundation. So we always make sure that our feet are in position and we work our way up. So we're in position now. We're gonna get the bars off the stops and take them up to the sky. Now, again, we never ever lock out because when I lock out at this point here, the stress is no longer in my chest. It's, it's all in my front shoulders, it's in my elbows. So we're only ever gonna go four fifths of the way out but we're really, really gonna make sure that we get a squeeze and a contraction on this. So I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna stop short of hitting them stops by about half an inch. And then up, I'm gonna hold the squeeze and I'm gonna imagine that I'm turning my pinkies in. So you can notice that by the position of these handles actually, but you're gonna go down and you're gonna go up and I'm pushing through. At this, I'm gonna show you, I'm pushing through that part there of my hand to really emphasize the contraction on the chest. And again, we're two seconds on the positive and we're four seconds on the negative. And we're holding the squeeze at four fifths of the lockout just for a split second. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. And if I haven't already told you, this machine is definitely one of my favorite machines in my gym or any gym that I've visited. Okay, so this is a variation of an inclined dumbbell press, but folks are more on the upper middle of the, of the chest. Bench is on about 45 degree angle. I'm not actually sitting on the seat. I'm leaning back on it. I'm making sure my shoulder blades are back. And on the dumbbells, we're gonna keep them locked together and we're gonna bring them facing that way like that. So you're seeing the lower part of the dumbbell towards your eyes and away from you, so towards your needs, the dumbbell's higher. Once we lower this down, we keep our elbows nice and tight coming in. We go down just to our chest there, and as we go up, we're pushing it back over and squeezing our chest. We'll come back down again and up. And as we're going down, we're breathing in and we're breathing out as we go up. As well as pushing, we're trying to squeeze them dumbbells together, which tightens the chest. So we're going down, up, and hold the squeeze for a split second. Come down in a controlled manner, about four second negative, up, and two seconds going up again, and back down again. Make sure you keep your hands in the same position as you're going up and down in that one. That one targets the upper part of the inner chest, and it's a part of the chest that does slightly get neglected if your form isn't quite right on various other exercises. So the next exercise is going to be using the machine, the pec fly machine. This machine is universal. You can use it here for your, for your rear delts or you can use it for your pec. We're going to use it for our pec right now. So on this machine, the first thing what you, you see is the handles. For me, these handles are a little bit low. I like my hands a little bit higher. So I'm going to hold it there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine that I've got that barrel inside my hands. I'm going to imagine I've got that barrel inside my arms, which is going to create the perfect shape and angle of my elbows and push them together. Now what I'm going to do is as, if you note my feet position, I'm putting them behind me slightly. And then as I take this back, I'm going to lean my chest forward to really emphasize that stretch. And I'm going to bring my chest up to the sky as I close it in. So lean forward. So back. As I'm coming up, I'm pushing my chest to the sky to contract it. Lean forward again. I'm pushing my chest to the sky every single time. And that will really help get a stretch on that chest. But don't forget to make sure that as you're coming up with it, you're bringing your chest to the sky to really pop it and push with this part of your hand your hands there so as you can see i'm pushing and i'm almost opening my hands up to get that squeeze but i'm making sure my arms are got nice and wide again there and back up again there and that really causes a stretch and a contraction it's a great exercise so this 
isn't seen in every gym around the world, but it's an absolutely fantastic piece of cardio equipment. It's called the Stairmaster, and it can be absolutely brutal, but so rewarding. You see a lot of professional athletes, particularly bodybuilders, bikini girls, who absolutely love this for the, for the simple fact that it puts a good emphasis on your glutes while you're doing it. So when you do get on this Stairmaster, just press the green button in front of you, what that'll do, it'll release the brake off the revolving staircase. Now, the staircase will move depending on the user's weight. And all you're going to do is by turning the level up, is release the brake a little bit more, which will allow the revolving staircase to revolve that little bit faster. Ashley uses this daily, so she's a seasoned pro on this machine, and she loves it. There's various ways you can use it. You can use it a single step at a time, or she could go on at two steps at a time. So now her feet will miss one tread and take two steps up. You could make it even more advanced by doing a glute kickback as you're stepping up the steps. As I said, this is an absolutely amazing piece of kit. And if your gym's got one, you're a really lucky person, so make the most of this. Don't be afraid of it. Start off if you can do one minute and then work your way up to two minutes. And what sometimes we do is we'll do a period of time on this and we'll then put somebody off it, back onto the treadmill and then come back on again. So that way they can work the wheel to a level. Uh, Ashley's currently doing around about one hour solid on this. Now, myself, I'll probably do about three or four minutes. It's a hard piece of equipment, but so rewarding and so 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 beneficial to anybody so i would definitely recommend that you definitely give this a go give it a try don't be afraid of it and just to finish this one off ashley's going to turn the speed up and she's going to show you now how she can get into a run and just note this fact as well on this particular stairmaster in the top left hand corner there's a picture of a fan if she presses the picture of the fan that'll blow cold air at her face so she's going to get into a run as you do get more experience on this You'll be able to leave go of the handles, but I would recommend you always stay within a balance. As you can see now, Ashley's actually into a run where her arms are moving as well. As her arms are moving, she's burning more calories because more parts of her body are moving. So this piece of cardio equipment is probably the most recognizable in, in almost every gym around the world. The treadmill, it's great for low impact walking on an incline to a jog to a sprint. So I'm just going to show you now how to set this up. When you first got the treadmill, you'll press start or quick start. Then we have various options on here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to increase the speed and we're just going to do it to a slow, steady walk. So maybe we're going to put that to around about 2.5 miles an hour. From there, we can either increase or decrease the incline. So if we want to walk uphill, we'll simply press the incline up button and we're going to take that up to level three. Studies show that walking on an incline can burn up to twice as many calories as you do when you're walking on a flat. And a treadmill is a great way for you to come in, warm up, cool down, or even do a full cardio-based workout. That's a demonstration of a walk. If we were going to go into a slight jog, We'll just put the treadmill up to about 5.3 miles an hour, which will just force you into a slight run. Once you've done that, it's really simple. You can either slow it down and go down to a slow walk again, or if at that point you want to stop the treadmill, just simply press the stop button, or in an emergency, pull the cord off, which will completely stop the treadmill right there. This next exercise is probably one of my favorite for quads and I either use it to pre-exhaust or to burn out. Generally use it as the first exercise or as the last one. So it's called the leg extension and it really isolates the quads. Your foot position can determine which section of the quad that you're targeting. So I'm going to show you now my favorite position to do this. So. First thing we're going to do is get our feet 
under the pad and we're going to slightly point our toes out over. Now, as she kicks this up, we're imagining that her toes are getting thrown all over the top of her shoulders. So can you see her foot position? So she's bringing it up and she's imagining that them feet are going over the top of her shoulders. This is a great way to really contract them quad muscles. So we're going to go down. And we're always going to remember that as we go down, so you take that up, Ash. As we go down, we're going to go down as if our finger's in there, and that's the depth that we're going to go down to and back up again. We're not going to let the plates touch, but we're also not going to take it just a little bit down. So as we come up, we're going to get up, and we're going to put the power through our legs. Almost so, this part of the quad can lift off the pad. Can you see that? She'll take it up and this part of the hamstring lifts off the pad. Okay, so this exercise is a walking dumbbell lunge. And slightly different to the standing dumbbell lunge, we're only gonna take one dumbbell, but we're gonna place it above our head, which really, really emphasizes the importance of having your balance right on this. So you can either do this with a dumbbell, you can do it without a dumbbell, or you can do it with a dumbbell in each hand. It's a lot harder with the dumbbell above your head. But for this exercise, I'm gonna show you the hardest way. So notice what Ashley is doing here. She's placing her feet back together on every step. She's not going from left foot to right foot. She's starting at the same position again. Turn around. So notice how she's doing this here. She's not taking a massively long stride, but that dumbbell hasn't left the position and that's putting a, a great load onto the target area on this, on this exercise. And can you see how tight her core is when she's doing this as well? And that's because of the position of the dumbbell and the fact that she has to remain balanced. A walking dumbbell lunge is a fantastic exercise that should definitely be included in a leg workout. Okay guys, so this is a 45 degree leg press. So we're putting the emphasis on our quads. So our foot position is really important in this. We're gonna put our feet position a little bit closer than we generally would, just to try and put the stress and the emphasis onto the quads. So to get started, she'll do a full extension. And what she'll do here is she'll almost flare her knees out, which will allow the break at the hips. So it won't put so much stress onto the knees. So she'll take it down and she'll push it up. And all the time she's driving through the heels of her feet. So again, she's flaring the knees out and that's allowing her to break at the hips, which is removing any stress from the knee. Now, a good way to see what depth you want to come down on this is either to make sure that that part of the quad touches the tummy, as it does, or by placing your hands across your chest onto your shoulders, like that, and then bringing your knees down so they touch your elbows. And that's a great reference point to know that you've come down far enough because some people will only come down by three or four inches to, from here to there and they'll load the weight up so they think they're really strong but really there's no benefit to the quads. The only thing that's benefiting is the ego. So again, up and down and every time she's pushing the weight through the heels of her feet. And finally, just to finish, if she grabs all the handles again, she'll get some reps going out and they're really, really important and the key element of this is never ever ever lock them legs we've all seen the youtube videos where the leg locks and it snaps please don't ever lock them legs keep the weight through the heels keep your knees pointing out over and take it up just before your knees lock to get enough emphasis onto the quads and to protect them knees it's really really important give me two more reps ash breathe out now in as you go down this is a great way for anybody who struggles to do conventional squats in a squat rack. It's called a V-squat. And it's a great way to, to be able to do a squat in a safe manner and really try and develop. Even if you haven't got an injury and you really want to put your quads under maximum tension, this is a fantastic machine. This is made by Hammer Strength, but there's a lot of different brands out there. So we'll place our back against the pad and our shoulders underneath. She'll, if you notice her foot position, she's going to be just slightly short of shoulder width apart and the toes are going to be pointing nice and straight. If we stand up now, that's locked her off. So what she's going to do now again, 
she's going to splay her knees out over, which allows her to open up at the hips. If she keeps her knees pointing in over, she doesn't engage her hips. She needs to bring them knees out over, so it allows the depth of that squat to go down. And again, she's driving all the force through the heels of the feet and up through there as well. Now, a way, if you're going quite light, you probably wouldn't get this if it was heavy, a way to treat, really try and emphasize these quads is when she's going at the top, so we'll do it on the next rep, so she'll go down. As she comes up, she'll lift them heels off, which will really emphasize that quad without having to lock out them knees fully. And it's just a matter of lifting them off and straight back down again. And again, just key points on this, so we'll just keep our feet flat for now. So key points on this, make sure our knees are coming slightly out over, which allows us to open up at the hips to take the depth of that squat, because if you don't, it's a really, 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 con it's a really compact position. And we're breathing out as we're at the top, and we're going down. And just notice how far down she's going. She's going down enough, so her glutes are probably just about in line with the back of the kneecap. Okay, so this is a sissy squat. Don't let that name make you think that it's an easy exercise because it's really, really not. So as we placed our feet in here, we need to make sure that we're locked in. So that's nice and tight because this is going to be the only position that is securing you from falling over. So once we've done that, we're going to allow our calf to sit against the back pad. Now, if we just watch as Ash goes into a squat position, she's going to lean back. She's dropping a glute down. And then instead of pushing the shoulders up to the top like that, which is rested, she's going to keep the emphasis on the quad. So to do that, she's going to go down and she's going to push her shoulders up there. Then back down again and really push up through them heels. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze and down. And notice how she's still then back over, which is putting extra stress onto them quads because if she was to do it the wrong way, which we'll do next time, one more, and do it the wrong way, she's rested there, so there's no longer any resistance on her quads. So finally, we'll just do two or three reps, Ash. So get up, do it as you normally would. Squeeze, one, that's it. Properly our way. Up, two. One more, Ash. Up, 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 squeeze, that's it, well done. That's a sissy squat. It is a brutal exercise. And we like to use this as probably the last exercise in a leg workout, just to finish them, just to really, really get maximum blood flow to them quads. And it's a great finisher exercise. But I repeat, do not let the name sissy squat make you think that it's an easy exercise because it's probably the complete opposite. So this isn't seen in every gym around the world, but it's an absolutely fantastic piece of cardio equipment. It's called the Stairmaster, and it can be absolutely brutal, but so rewarding. You see a lot of professional athletes, particularly bodybuilders, bikini girls, who absolutely love this for the, for the simple fact that it puts a good emphasis on your glutes while you're doing it. So when you do get on this Stairmaster, just press the green button in front of you. What that'll do, it'll release the brake off the revolving staircase. Now, the staircase will move depending on the user's weight, and all you're going to do is by turning the level up is release the brake a little bit more which will allow the revolving staircase to revolve that little bit faster. Ashley uses this daily so she's a seasoned pro on this machine and she loves it. There's various ways you can use it. You can use it a single step at a time or she could go on two steps at a time so now her feet will miss one tread and take two steps up. You could make it even more advanced by doing a glute kickback as you're stepping up the steps. As I said, this is an absolutely amazing piece of kit. And if your gym's got one, you're a really lucky person. So make the most of this. Don't be afraid of it. Start off if you can do one minute and then work your way up to two minutes. And what sometimes we do is we'll do a period of time on this and we'll then put somebody off it back onto the treadmill and then come back on again. So that way they can work the wheel to a level. Uh, Ashley's currently doing around about one hour solid on this. Now, myself, I'll probably do about three or four minutes. 
it's a hard piece of equipment but so rewarding and so 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 beneficial to anybody so i would definitely recommend that you definitely give this a go give it a try don't be afraid of it and just to finish this one off Ashley's going to turn the speed up and she's going to show you now how she can get into a run and just note this fact as well on this particular stairmaster in the top left hand corner there's a picture of a fan if she presses the picture of the fan that'll blow cold air at her face so she's going to get into a run as you do get more experience on this you'll be able to leave go of the handles but I would recommend you always stay within a balance. As you can see now, Ashley's actually into a run where her arms are moving as well. As her arms are moving, she's burning more calories because more parts of her body are moving. So this piece of cardio equipment is probably the most recognizable in, in almost every gym around the world, the treadmill. It's great for low impact walking on an incline to a jog to a sprint. So I'm just going to show you now how to set this up. When you first got the treadmill, you'll press start or quick start. Then we have various options on here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to increase the speed and we're just going to do it to a slow, steady walk. So maybe we're going to put that to around about 2.5 miles an hour. From there, we can either increase or decrease the incline. So if we want to walk uphill, we'll simply press the incline up button and we're going to take that up to level three. Studies show that walking on an incline can burn up to twice as many calories as you do when you're walking on a flat. And a treadmill is a great way for you to come in, warm up, cool down, or even do a full cardio based workout. That's a demonstration of a walk. If we were going to go into a slight jog, We'll just put the treadmill up to about 5.3 miles an hour, which will just force you into a slight run. Once you've done that, it's really simple. You can either slow it down and go down to a slow walk again, or if at that point you want to stop the treadmill, just simply press the stop button or in an emergency, pull the cord off, which will completely stop the treadmill right there. Okay, so this is, this is using the lion leg curl, but to do a single leg curl. So to do this one, what we're going to do is we're going to place our right foot forward and we're going to place our quad on top of this pad. Again, our body's going to be upright and I'm going to imagine that I'm bringing my heel right up to my bum. So I'm bringing it up, I'm holding that squeeze there and bring it back down again. And what I'm trying to do, is I'm trying to keep my body upright so I'm in the same position. Squeezing it bring it back down again, squeezing it and bring it back down again and really hold that stretch there. Then we've got to do the other leg. So we're going to put our left leg forward. And exactly the same thing again. Hold on to the sides, bring that up. Imagine we're bringing our heel over to our head, taking the full stretch. And we really need to try and contract our hamstrings on this. So we're holding the stretch at the top. And we'll go hold that, slowly go down. And as you start to get tired on the hamstring, what you want to try and do is just try and get a couple of reps out at the bottom like that there. Just to really try and get the final few reps out. Okay, so this is an absolutely fantastic exercise for the hamstrings. It's called the lion hamstring curl or lion leg curl. Now we're going to do this slightly different, all right, because the way this machine has you, I don't think puts the greatest emphasis onto the hamstring. So Ash is going to lay down and what it would normally have you do, it would normally have you laid flat on the bench like that. Now, I don't think that gives you as much of a stretch on your hamstrings as what you can actually get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift Ash's shoulder off. So if you notice a body, a shoulder comes all the way down in one position from her shoulders all the way down to her heels. So now what she's going to do is she's going to imagine that she's kicking the heel of her foot up over her shoulders. And when she gets to that point, she's going to hold the squeeze and then slowly control it all the way down and then return it back up again. What you're trying to do is try and get that pad up far enough so that comes up to touch the glutes, hold that squeeze and return it back down again. This is a fantastic exercise. Now on this one, please try and go to a weight that you can lift. 
because it's really, really easy to get cramp or to damage your hamstrings. So please make sure that you're choosing a weight that you can perform. If you're going for 10 or 12, try and get there. So we're just going to do three more. She's holding it up, she's holding the squeeze, she's returning it back down again. One more, and just look at her position again, the way she is, her shoulders are up, and as she comes down, she's in one straight plane. Great work. Okay, guys, so this one is a seated leg curl. Again, another great hamstring um, exercise. So what Lindsay's going to do, she's going to place her feet in between these two pads, and then we're going to lift it up so she gets her legs nice and straight. That's a starting position. Now, again, I'm going to slightly change the way you normally sit. So, Lynn, show me the way you would normally sit on this one. So, the machine would have you sit with your back against there and your hands on the handles and locked in. What I'm going to do is try and put a little bit more emphasis on them hamstrings. So, I'm going to lean her chest forward and I'm going to get her to grab hold of the underneath side of the seat. Now, what we've got to do on this one is we've got to try and keep our feet in that position and imagine that we're shooting our heel right through to the floor and holding it for a split second. So we'll make the, the first exercise going out. We're holding that squeeze, can you see there? And then we're returning it back up again to get a full stretch on them hamstrings. And then we're going to go back down, holding that squeeze back up again. And again, look how she's sat forward. She's grabbing hold of them seats to try and pull herself in to really squeeze them hamstrings on every contraction. Good work, keep going, give me two more lins. Good work. One more, nice big squeeze. Then to finish this exercise, she'll let the, the pads go right at the top, press in the button and return it back down again. Okay, so this is the Romanian deadlift. And people sometimes get these confused with a stiff deadlift. There is a difference. So this exercise is the Romanian deadlift. So Ash is going to get the bar. Now notice on this, we've got her heels elevated. She prefers it this way. You don't have to try it and see whether you prefer it with your heels elevated or without. If you don't have a block, you could use the lat pull down bar to place your heels on. But with the Romanian deadlift, Ash is going to shoot her glutes back. And notice the curve in the back as she's bending over. She's taken the bar just till she can get that maximum stretch. So you notice she's only been able to get that probably about two inches past the knees. That's because her shoulders are pulled back, her glutes are pushed back. Take that down. Notice how her shoulders aren't dropped forward unlike they do when you're doing a stiff dead. Her shoulders are back. She's got that curvature in there. And as she comes up, she's not going all the way. She's pulling her glutes back. She's lowering the bar down and keep going up. Notice how her shoulders at all times are always pulled back as she's going down, which is keeping that perfect shape and symmetry. So that's a Romanian deadlift, which sometimes does get confused with a stiff deadlift. Please watch both videos to see which one you prefer, both for an exercise in their own right. Okay, so this is how to perform a glute kickback on a multi-hip machine. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that the height of the pad is correct and set this pad at the correct distance. So Ash does this on level four, which will be her starting position. So she'll stand on there and this is for a right leg. So as you can see there, that is sat perfectly just behind the kneecap. Now what she's gonna do is she's gonna drive this as if she's driving a foot up to the sky and she's holding it and coming back. And notice her form on this. She's, because she's sitting on level four, it means she can come forward to really stretch that glute before she kicks it back to hold the contraction. Okay, then we're gonna swap legs. Okay, so you'll see this from the opposite side now. She's holding that squeeze, she's making that contraction at the top. And then as she's coming down, she's forcing her knee to go up towards the sky in front of her. Great work, just two more, Ash. One more. Okay, great work. Okay, so this is a hip thrust, but we're gonna do it on the line leg curl machine. This is a great way to try and get hip thrusts if you haven't got a hip thrust machine or you want to change our from doing it with a bar, this is a great way. So we've got a step box where Lindsay's going to place her feet. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the pad up first and then watch the way Lindsay's position goes in here. So she's going to spread her feet just a little bit wider apart and she's going to get in position. So what Lindsay's going to do now, she's going to drop the glutes right down to the floor. And as she comes up, she's thrusting up and at that point she's holding the squeeze on the glutes. She's going to take it right back down again and then back up again and thrust forward. Now her form on this is absolutely perfect. So she's going to just do three or four more reps so you can see exactly what she's doing here. That's great form. So she's taking it really deep to stretch and then at the top she's holding that contraction and all the while she's pushing the weight through the heels of her feet, holding the stretch on every rep. Give me two more ins. Now getting out this machine can be quite challenging, so I'm going to hold the, the plate for her. But that's a hip thrust on the line leg curl machine, a fantastic exercise for anybody who wants to target them glutes. So this isn't seen in every gym around the world, but it's an absolutely fantastic piece of cardio equipment. It's called the Stairmaster, and it can be absolutely brutal, but so rewarding. You see a lot of professional athletes, particularly bodybuilders, bikini girls, who absolutely love this for the, for the simple fact that it puts a good emphasis on your glutes while you're doing it. So when you do get on this Stairmaster, just press the green button in front of you, what that'll do, it'll release the brake off the revolving staircase. Now, the staircase will move dependent on the user's weight. And all you're going to do is by turning the level up, is release the brake a little bit more, which will allow the revolving staircase to revolve that little bit faster. Ashley uses this daily, so she's a seasoned pro on this machine, and she loves it. There's various ways you can use it. You can use it a single step at a time, or she could go on at two steps at a time. So now her feet will miss one tread and take two steps up. You could make it even more advanced by doing a glute kickback as you're stepping up the steps. As I said, this is an absolutely amazing piece of kit. And if your gym's got one, you're a really lucky person, so make the most of this. Don't be afraid of it. Start off if you can do one minute and then work your way up to two minutes. And what sometimes we do is we'll do a period of time on this and we'll then put somebody off it, back onto the treadmill and then come back on again. So that way they can work the way up to a level. Uh, Ashley's currently doing around about one hour solid on this. Now, myself, I'll probably do about three or four minutes. It's a hard piece of equipment, but so rewarding and so 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 beneficial to anybody so i would definitely recommend that you definitely give this a go give it a try don't be afraid of it and just to finish this one off ashley's going to turn the speed up and she's going to show you now how she can get into a run and just note this fact as well on this particular stairmaster in the top left hand corner there's a picture of a fan if she presses the picture of the fan that'll blow cold air at her face so she's going to get into a run as you do get more experience on this You'll be able to leave go of the handles, but I would recommend you always stay within a balance. As you can see now, Ashley's actually into a run where her arms are moving as well. As her arms are moving, she's burning more calories because more parts of her body are moving. Again, once you've finished on the Stairmaster even, again, press the big red button in front of you and that'll apply the brake to the staircase and allow you to safely dismount and move on to the next exercise.